Welcome back. For almost two years, we brought you continuous coverage of the Lori Vallow case. The mom and her husband are charged in the deaths of not just her two children, but others with her brother, the accused hitman. Last month, Chandler police re released a huge digital file of evidence, including interrogation room interviews and phone calls with detectives. Kim Powell has been digging into that evidence that gives us a glimpse of the mindset that put Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow in what seems to be a spiraling path. and hours of police interviews and phone calls with investigators. Chandler police detectives were just scratching the surface while investigating the death of Charles Vallow. Charles Vallow is my brother. Okay. Uh, was my brother and I, I don't, we just, we don't even, I don't even know where to start with all this because this is crazy. I, I couldn't, we were blown away. As Charles lay dead in an empty living room on July 11th, 2019, his estranged wife, Lori Vallow, was taken in for questioning, along with her daughter, Tylee, and the man behind the trigger, Lori's brother, Alex Cox, who claimed self-defense. You can just kind of tell me kind of what happened. It sounds like some of this may have started last night or something along those lines. Right. So start where you think it makes the most sense. Okay, so, um, <laughs> kind of some of the information we got from patrol didn't really match up what Lori told us compared to so walk me through what happened today I just kind of heard yelling over everything mm -hmm. I don't know I kind of just do that whenever things are like really loud I kind of just like tune mm -hmm. what people are saying out according to the 1100 page police report detectives knew something was off about their stories but they didn't file any charges Instead, detectives started building a bigger case. This is my brother and sister, and I love them with all my heart. But I'm telling you, there's something wrong about Lori and Alex and this, this belief that they have. And, you know, Lori thinks that death is it, nothing. That's the voice of Lori's other brother, Adam, who called Chandler police to tell them everything he knew. He said he felt Charles' death was part of a meticulous plan. She talks about um, people having dark spirits that she can see, and she, can, she knows who has dark spirits and when there's dark spirits around. Lori was a devout member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But Adam says her beliefs started to stray from the Book of Mormon and reality. For Lori to say that she goes to the temple and talks to Jesus Christ, and that she's on a special mission here to gather 144,000 people, and that she's married to Moroni, and that she has to do whatever it is to, to make sure her mission gets um, completed, which could mean killing Charles or anybody that's getting in her way of her mission. And it's, it's literally nonsense. Family members say Lori was the perfect mother, at least until about 2018 the same year she met Chad Daybell, an author of doomsday books from a small town in eastern Idaho. Text messages just released by detectives show Charles felt Chad and Lori were having an affair. From there, Lori determined Charles was a dark spirit, and it was her duty to cast those spirits out of people. That's what the idea is, is to get, an, if there is an evil spirit in you, then you ask in the name of Christ, that that evil spirit leave. That's what it's about. Melanie Gibb was a close friend of Lori's, someone who, at least at one point, believed in Lori and Chad's so-called powers. Chad would help groom her into these beliefs and ideas. He would help her believe more and more, like, you're the most powerful woman in the world, right? Text messages show Lori started referring to Charles as Hiplos with the other people who believed in her powers. One text said, let's put some fire energy towards Hiplos now. I can do it spiritually. Let's go to him and hover over the truck till we do it. Other texts show her talking about summoning earthquakes and removing weapons from people that were under attack by evil spirits. It was Lucifer himself, she wrote. I am told he is now banished from Arizona. But on the surface, Lori put on a show and knew when to turn on her charm. Because if you don't know what he wants, it's like on the floor screaming, dragging him in to school. 
and he's big and he's heavy. Detectives learn not only did Lori believe she had priesthood powers, but they say she also made Alex think he was put on this earth to protect her and help her carry out her missions. Alex is excommunicated from the church. And so he believes Lori, because Lori's like, it doesn't matter what you do in this world, all you have to do is have a body and you can be saved. You're, you're just here to get a body. And Al loves that because then he can go sin and do whatever he wants. So he loves to hear what Lori has to tell him. Alex didn't live long enough to answer to the law for Charles's death. He died five months later. And within those five months, Lori's kids, JJ and Tylee died, and so did Chad's wife, Tammy, all of whom Lori considered to be possessed by dark spirits. Kim Powell and Morgan Lowe break down the latest criminal charges against Lori and Chad in the latest episode of True Crime Arizona, Lori Vallow's Deadly Delusions. You can subscribe to that wherever you get your podcasts.